Hello friends, this is Indranil. I welcome you all to my channel, Programming is Fun. Today I am back with another challenge from Frontend Mentor. And this time we will be creating this intro component with sign up form. And if you click on this challenge, as you can see, there are uh, certain styles here. So this is the design that we will be creating. And this also has got some active states. So this uh, challenge requires you to know HTML, CSS, and a bit of JavaScript. And I've already downloaded the starter crit from here and extracted it here. So if I go to the design, and this is the desktop design that we will be creating with uh, left-hand column and right-hand column, we will create this form here with the input elements and also this button. This input element or these elements, they have this kind of uh, error state. So if you leave them empty or you try to submit the form without entering data, so this is what you should get. Okay, so all these um, fields should turn red based on their current state. And, and if it's empty, it will show you this red exclamation logo. Okay, so we'll be creating this. And in the mobile version, this is how it should look like. Okay. So let me minimize the design. And I have already uh, created a new project in my IDE WebStorm. So let me quickly copy the index and the images folder from here and paste it into the root folder. Perfect. So as always, I'll create a new folder for my SAS, that's my style.css. So I'll name it, uh, let's say, mm, style.css. Uh, again, I will be creating only one single style sheet here uh, because this is a pretty simple project. Again, it's not, not a complicated one. And I'm going to use my file watcher here this time. So it's fine. And the name here will be. I want to put it in the CSS folder. And you just need to add the path here. And also, I want to monitor the parent directory or the project directory rather. So I'll insert that macro here. Don't auto save and show me only on error. So let's quickly add the default uh, reset that we always do. And it will be margin zero, zero, padding zero, and box sizing for the box. Okay. So my CSS has been compiled here, as you can see. And I will quickly go here, link my CSS file just below the title. Okay, so when I, when I start the debugging, this style sheet would, would uh, already be there. Okay, also, before running the debug, I would also run, need to go to my folder and I need to open this style guide. Let's see if I can open this with uh, Notepad. I'm going to allow me, I believe. Uh, let's see. Oh, it worked. So these are my styles. Okay. First of all, let's quickly go to this site and download the font. The so weights are four, five, six, seven. I go to my browser, open it, and I need 400, 500, 600, and 700. Okay. Copy this entire tag, go back, and paste it here. Save the changes and font family. I'll copy it from here. And I simply put a body tag here. So I don't lose it. Oops. Copy, paste. Perfect. Now in the CSS, this is the compiled version. As you can see, everything is working fine. And now simply I will go here and click on this Firefox icon. We open my page here, and as you can see, 
a style sheet has been loaded. I don't have any padding margin. And I also have this new pop-in font here. We close this. And the way we can check whether the style sheet is working or not, let me quickly put this browser to the right hand side, like this. And I'll put my code editor on the left. I'll quickly go here and give it give the body a background color. Let's say yellow. Save. There you go. Okay, so this is working in real time. Now let's quickly uh, work on the marker first. We'll be creating the desktop version first. Okay, so although the markup, markup will be same for both, there is no change in the markup. And one other thing I would need is a JavaScript file, a custom JavaScript file here. And this I need to link in my HTML. I'll use the script tag. Yes, plus one dot yes. Not sure if this will work. I'll uh, check the source code. Uh, yeah, it's linked somehow. Let's quickly check that. I put an alert here. Hello. Save. There you go. It's working. Wonderful. No okay, so we'll work on the JavaScript part later on. Let's concentrate on the HTML part. I'll keep the footer as it is. Okay, the very first thing I would want is, as per the design here, the desktop design. Uh, let's see this one. I need a wrapper to contain my whole uh, design inside it. Okay, so I'll create a div here with a class of wrapper. Inside this div, I will have a section, a left section, and a right section. Okay, simple, nothing fancy. Inside the left section, as you can see, I have my heading and my paragraph. So these two. So I'm going to cut it here, the heading, and paste it there. I'm using H1 tab. And the paragraph will be this one. Save the changes and go back to my browser. Okay, so you see this has become H1 and this is my paragraph. And in the right section, I will have uh, H2 with a class of heading. This heading will be my try it for free. And I'm putting it and giving, giving it a class because I need to design this uh, in this form. Okay, so I need this blue background. Okay, so I, uh, that's why I'm giving it a class. So I can target the target it easily, and the this portion of the heading would be wrapped inside a span tag because if you if you have noticed in the design, uh, this is in bold and the remaining text is a, is is in the normal font font weight. I mean, okay. just below the H two, I would create a div and. I'll name it form group. This will contain my entire form. And, and you can see on the right hand side, the changes are being done as I type it here. Okay. This is pretty handy. So I'll create a form tag without the action attribute. I'll use the ID and let's name it form. You can name anything you want. Inside the form, I will have four devs. Okay. Each div will have an input. Okay. First one will be of type text. I'll give it a class of first name, placeholder, first name, and an ID of F name. So this is the default uh, styling of an input element. Also for the error, I would need an image, and the image is that exclamation image, which is this one. It's given in the SVG format. Okay, in the design package, and then this is error, all tag, and another span tag that will say first uh, name cannot be empty. So everything looks pretty uh, bad right now. Okay, but we will style them later on. So I'll simply copy this div three more times one, two. Three. Okay, so last one 
is the my password and class class will be password this is also password and we will do use soft wrap and id will also be password or oh, let's make it pass so error icon will be same class name is pass underscore error and this will be password not be empty this will be my email so type is email and class will be email id will be email and the placeholder will be email address so email cannot be empty okay although in the error they have a different message that says looks like a, this is not an email but i'm not creating this i'll simply target the empty condition whether, whether when this field is touched but uh it's still empty okay but you can definitely query for i mean query for a pattern and check and match the email value with the pattern and throw that error if, if, you, if you want that to happen. So email, then this is the last name, last name, L name, this last name, this one, last. Okay, so I have my four uh, input fields. I would also need a button just after, before the form ends. So, Button, let's give it a class of VPN and also VPN green. So it is, it's, a, it's a green button. And the type will be submit. Okay, and let's call it. Then the text will be claim your P file. Now, for that, we have a we have a paragraph that says uh, this by clicking your uh, this uh, disclaimer okay and this disclaimer will also have span tag for terms and services i'm simply wrapping them in the span tag so i think that's all about our markup we'll come to this later if if you see there is any any mistake or we missed anything, we'll come to this and we'll check that. So I'm simply squeezing this entire thing, excuse that. And we'll work on the design part now. So I'll jump to the SCSS file. So first things first, I need the colors, right? Like the colors are given in this notepad. Uh, so you see red, green, blue, dark blue, grayish blue, all this all these colors. So I've already created the CSS variables for these colors. I'll simply uh, copy those variables from my notepad and I'll target the HTML root element. Okay, I'll put those colors here. And these values, I converted them from HSL to their equivalent hex code. And I, I can easily do that in my IDE. And I can convert them back like this. And you see, this matches with this value. So if your ID doesn't do that, then you can simply copy the hex value from here, or you can stay with HSL. That's all right. And HSL stands for hue, saturation, and um, I believe L is your uh, luminance, I believe. I'm, I'm not sure. Let's check it here. HSL form. Ah, lightness. My bad. Hue saturation like this. Okay. That's all right. So after this, I have also created a few fonts. So default font as per the guide is 16. I'll also have a medium font. It will be double of uh, approximately 28 pixels, a large font, 32 pixels, and 
uh, extra large just in case if I need it. So it will be four, three times. Okay. And for larger screens, I'll quickly give it a media query here. And let's say min width is 1024 pixels. So all these fonts, they will increase in size. So this will become 32, this will become 48, and this will become 64. Okay, just random values. These, these are not defined anywhere in the style guide. So I, I only have the default font cells, okay? And font family is already set here. So let's quickly set the font size. And I'll use the variable that is fs default. And let's also give it a, so you see everything is stacked to the top left corner. Let's quickly give it a padding. Uh, padding top of three rems. So one one rem here is equal to 16 pixels by default. So three rem is equal to 48 pixels. Okay. So if you, uh, it's good to use rem or relate, uh, uh, root units. Okay. Uh, so that it will it will work as per your browser, and it will be responsive. Instead of using pixel units, it's recommended to use m or rems. And for the uh, bottom also, I have the same uh, value. And the reason I'm using individual properties and, and not a shorthand is because I don't want to mess up with the uh, padding right and left, which might be inheriting from its parent. Okay, let's target only what we need. Next comes the wrapper. Okay, just give it a comment, wrapper. So we target the wrapper class. So we'll give it a margin left of auto and margin right of auto center it out and it needs a width also so i'll give it a width of 1400 pixels okay as you can see uh, i have this scroll bar now because my browser is stretching there okay now i can see i'll work like this maybe or like this Okay, so our styling, we are doing it here. And uh, let me try soft wrap. Yeah, it works. Okay, it works. Wonderful. So um, let's also give it a margin bottom of around 30 pixels and a background color of red. This is a variable already defined. You see, it's the same color that we have in the design here. All right. Okay, moving on. The height uh, it would need is around 800 pixels. Okay, looking nice. And I'll also give it a padding of 4 n all across. My content inside the wrapper, we have two sections. So I want them to stack in a row so next to each other, like that. And I'm using display flex. So by default, is, the direction is row. And I'll justify the content around with space around. Okay. Let's give it a gap of 1.5 rems. Aligned item center. So it will be vertically aligned in, in the middle, both of them, as you can see. Also, it, it, it has a background image. You see, this, this image is there, this nice uh, background image that has all these designs. Let's quickly add it. We, all, we, all, we, all, we already have that uh, in our uh, images folder. I'll go there and look for the desktop. Save the changes, and now I will have it. Okay. So I'm not touching the background positioning or background power or anything like that. Uh, sorry, background repeat these properties because it looks okay to me. I don't have any complaints with this. Next, uh, this also needs a box shadow, the entire wrapper, I mean. So I'll give it a box shadow of 5 pixels vertically 
let's do the spread of a blur of five pixels and RGBA black and opacity is 0.3. Save changes. So now we now we have a nice box shadow appearing here. Okay. All right. So I'll leave a section here to do media story from later on. Next target the left section here where we have the heading and uh, paragraph. So of course the color is white and padding left. Uh, let's see five rims. Oh it's a little less. Let me try eight rim. 8.5. Yeah, so now it's okay. And this should have a flex property of 0, 0, 45 percent. Okay, now you see shin. And I have the text contained uh, in this particular area. Now I'll Target the H1 element, which will have a font size of uh, FX large. There we go. And margin bottom of around 20 pixels. Also, let's go over the paragraph font size of 40 pixels. Save. Okay, now it looks nice. And line height of 1.8. We'll give it a gap between the lines. Okay, let's also put a to do here. Maybe a query. Next, we have the right section. Again, it will have a flex property of zero, zero, 40 percent this time. I'm not giving it 45, let's give it 40. And you'll have a height of 600 pixels. Okay, now see the entire content move, move to the top where the content is starting. Okay. It's all right. So I'll first target the heading here. Heading. We have a max width of 100%. And then background color of blue, the one I hit it. Okay, now you see it has the same color. Border radius of around 8 pixels. Give it a nice rounded corner. And a padding of around 1 rem all around. Okay, never mind. Color is white and on size I'll give default. Okay, there we go. The font weight could be 400 because this is a heading, so it will have a bold bold font weight by default. I'll make it normal and align the text with center. There we go. Let's also give it a box shadow as per the design shadow of zero horizontal eight pixel from vertical ten pixel is your blur and color is black point three it has this subtle box shadow here next we need a gap between the form elements and this heading so we'll give it a mark from bottom of around 30 pixels. Okay. Display block. It has a span, if you remember. We'll make the font weight, first of all, uh, six or seven as well. So, highest one we have. Okay. Display will be inline block. Okay. 
next let's target the uh, form group again we will use flexbox to display everything properly and flex direct in this column now we'll give it a width of 100 percent so the form group div will have the, will occupy the whole of the area the background color is of course white perfect and then the radius again we need a radius of eight pixels to match with the heading here and let's justify content center and align item center. Get a height of auto. And then let's create a padding of left to run, padding right to run. Okay, let's do it. This also needs, this also needs a box shadow. So I will use 10 pixel, 10 pixel RGBA, black 0.3, and you can also you create mixins, right, for these common properties like box shadow and all, and include those mix mixins here. That's all right, but I'm keeping it simple. Well, the div that we have inside this, let me just go back here. So the right we have these divs, okay, for each of the input elements. I'm targeting that, so that div will be will have flex one, occupy the whole area, and this play will be block. Right? Width is hundred percent, and then. My heading is one fifty one, one one. Okay, and this they will have a position of relative because I want to align this exclamation icon with respect to the div. Okay, and I'll also use a new pseudo element that is first of type, which is first of type of div. We have a margin top of twenty pixels. And the last of type will have a marking bottom of the pixels. There you go. Okay. Inside this, I have this error icon. Name it error icon, did I? Oh, I missed it here. Error icon. Okay. Let's see. Error. Error icon will have a position of absolute. Now, write implement eight percent as a power. We will check and change it if needed. Twenty eight percent. This is where it is right now. I have to first uh, finish the input. Okay, so this is my this is where my div ends. Start with all the inputs. I'll get this play block. Okay, now with which occupy is hundred percent. Okay, whole of it. I will have a padding of one point two rems, top and bottom, and one point three rems, left and right. Okay, this is how it looks. Nice. It, will, it won't have any outline and it will have a border radius of four pixels. Okay, and now we'll have a border of one pixel solid. And here I'm using the lighten function that offsets like in, uh, uh, light and light gray by 10%. So this is this is what we get. It's a very very light gray color border. And inside this, we have a font weight of bolder. Our placeholder text becomes bold here, and color of let's say dark blue. It looks 
much better now. And when you focus on using the focus pseudoplast on this element, so you have a border of 1 to 12 solid black. Like this. And this is how it's here, I believe. Not sure if this is dark blue or black. Let's check with dark blue. Does it have the same effect or not? Okay, let's stick with dark blue then. Okay, and the color of the text could be uh, dark blue as well. Let me move this and this a bit. Adjust my area and. After the div, so this is where my div ends. Again, I'll put a comment here. Div ends here. I'll target the button. The button, every button will have, will have a display of block with a 100% and adding one rem top, top and bottom and 1.2 rem left and right. So this is how it should look. Also, I'll give the margin of margin bottom of one rem. Okay. You have a gap between the text and the button itself. Also, the button should not have any uh, any outline. Uh, outline to none and border to none. Cursor to pointer. Uh, this is the final design. Of regular button, but now we also have a class between green. Okay, so this will have a green color background. Okay, there you go, the green color appears. Text color could be white, font size could be default. Okay, and text class of the uppercase perfect. And let's give a little, a little later spacing of around two pixels. Okay, looks better. On fit, we'll, I'll use 500 here. So that it appears little uh, bold, kind of. Although it's not that bold, but it's just enough to, to see clearly. Border radius, of course, 5 pixels all around. Border bottom. I'll use 3 pixels of this border bottom here, if you, if you notice. It has this nice uh nice uh, what do you call dark area here this is the border bottom border and i'm the time i'm using is outset and the color will be green okay so now you see we have the same effect here similarly border right i will use normal solid war color green border Left with some solid for color green, and the last one is water top. One pixel solid for green. All the borders are defined now. Last thing that is left is this paragraph text. With a font size of 12 pixels. Okay. And a color of gray blue. There you go. There you go. That's gray blue light color. The way we have it here. And you have a padding, uh, padding bottom of 2.5 pixels. Inside that, that paragraph we have a span that is for the terms and services so that will have a color of color red okay simple now we have this color red and we'll give it a font weight of 600 in the big bold there we go looks pretty decent okay now we have to work on the uh 
media queries. Okay, we have some media queries here. This is for left. Let's finish the right one first. I'll put the media query here. Okay. This will target, since I'm nesting it inside the dot right class, it will target the dot right class itself. Okay. Clean and max width. So I'm going from desktop to uh, tablet and mobile. Okay. So I'm, I'm not coding like mobile first, this desktop first. Okay. So my breakpoint will be 1023 pixels. And flex none. The flow will be flex. And flex direction will be column. Everything could, could stack and align item center. And uh, we have a width of 100%. And inside this, during the breakpoint, my heading will have a max width of 100%. I'll make it important. And flex align is center. Having left could be two ends, important, and having right could be two ends as well, important. Okay, next my form group. Max width, the person, and having left zero, I don't want any padding, and left and right. This has the button at the end. Now give it a bit of 90% on smaller screen. Make it important and font size of 12 pixels. Very important. The paragraph will have adding left one rem, adding right of one rem, and fix align center on smaller devices and the span would have a form rate of similar. I think that is already there, right? I don't need to define the span. It's already be similar. Okay. So for the error, I'll create a class. I don't want to show the error all the time. Okay. And I need to give all the errors this class. Error icon. Okay. First name, last name. You can have it. Email. And the password. And now they're aligned properly here. Wonderful. And this uh, error span, actually. The right, the right, then the input. Internal heading here, uh, it's this one in line block. Let me see if I okay, there's my heading form group. I need to check the form group. Okay. This has got a class. Are you targeting that class in okay. I'll create a 
utility class here, let's say dot visible, okay. And when you have that class, will be display block. Otherwise, otherwise the span is next to my input. Okay. With this F name L, L name okay, let's, okay, let's rename this to error, error. Uh, pass email last name and first name and with dot error should we display now okay now i don't have it perfect and and with uh, error icon already have error icon here so let's Go with the none, and if it's got a class of visible, so display. Now, if I put class of visible here, you see, see it there. right? Not sure. Let's see. Give me. Okay. Now we have to work on the JavaScript, but let's see how it looks like on smaller screens. Next, this I will go to the smaller screen. Something is off. Okay, I didn't complete the to-do, right? Uh, okay, we don't have the to-do for the left. Okay, we have to finish at first. That's why it's not working. So, the media query, I'm going to copy the same media rate point. And then if you have flex one, okay, zero, display to be flex. We do in column mode. Line items, center, max width, let's get 80%, and margin, margin bottom of three rem. I'll target both the H1 and the P elements, align them to the center, save the changes, P. Or so my one will have one size of that's large and a bit bottom of twenty pixels. Already already there. Wrapper. Here, the wrapper again copy the same media query with here. The flex direction column, height auto, but it's vertical now. This will be 80%. Save, go back. Ah, great. Now we have it properly. Button is a little off. Let's see the button. Oh, 
So in my right uh, media query, after heading, we have this form group, we have this button. Enter there. Put on the percent to occupy the whole. Just run the content here. Um, so, let's let's inspect this here. So, button. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I know why. So I'm just um, I'm not in the form here. Okay. So here I have to download the form. There you go. Okay, perfect. So now let's turn my off my uh, okay, form group if my form uh tags the flex container. Perfect. Now to increase the size, we will have this nice layout. I can remove this text from the bottom. And let me go ahead and do that. We'll put you work on the JavaScript here. Okay. So whenever oh sorry, uh, I go back to the browser. Whenever you remove the, the focus, it should it should get the error here. If the text is not fit. So I'll grab all the inputs. So document dot get all uh, get elements by tag in tag is input. Okay. I want to create a function to validate inputs. Okay. Like this I'll run a for loop. Let i equals to Zero I less than input dot length I plus plus and for every for the current uh, element that I'm iterating over, I'll add the event listener of blur and will create a listener function there. Then the listener function not Argument. So simply will store the error here. Get a reference to the error here and the error icon. Error icon will be document dot last name error icon. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. This current element has got no value. Then I want to add a class in the class list that will be invalid, the class that we created. And error name error. So whatever this is the collection, okay? And I'll Add class list. I'll, I'll add the class visible to the current to the correct uh, current element. 
that is uh, that is having this error class. Similarly, I'll also add the error item here. And else, simply remove the class. Okay, I'll simply remove this the remove method. Done. Let's call the function here. Save the changes. Go back to the browser. You select and go out. Okay, see this. But the thing is, I'm not seeing the text. Is the span here? Let's check. Uh, span has got error. Yes. Explain none. Visible. There you go. This this plan should should have balance. So when it's displaying, it should have let's align right. Color could be red. And on style is italic. So this is how it should appear. So fonts are pretty large. We need the font size Okay. Perfect. This corresponds to this uh, active state here. Last name and first name. These are all in italics. We have it here in our browser. You want to give it a little bit of spacing. You can do that. And you also need to turn this border. Okay. The error. Error, 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 error icon when it's visible. We have a border color of red and this is important and a border width of two pixels import they go find mm -hmm. not happening so this water product input Okay, okay, never mind. So let's quickly go here and and then and input is input is input is input input but uh, we're attaching this class invalid okay, so invalid. I have this link. Hopefully, yeah. Now we have this border. So wherever you click that field, only will have that error message. Okay, and this should also work in your mobile devices. So I refresh the page. Choose email. Go out. First name go out. And as soon as you type anything here and hit tab, this should go away. So this concludes our tutorial here and we'll get the code in my github repo in the description and the link will be in the description so i hope you liked it and please leave your comment suggestions feedback in the comment section below it will be really helpful for me to create the future videos based on your requirements and uh, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't done it already please hit the like button and i'll see you next time thank you and have a wonderful day